we are. This is the first church of the Fresco. Yes. And you can see the name of this is... Uh, Holy Trinity Church of the Fresco. This is still in the Glade uh -huh. Glendale. In Glendale. Glendale Springs. We'll tell you a little bit more about Fresco paintings as we go, but let's go inside and take a look. Yeah, come along with us. Pretty grounds, isn't it? Oh yeah, look at that. We're hoping it's unlocked. It said online that we could get in. Welcome to Holy Trinity Episcopal Church. Please keep this door closed. All right. Wow, look at these floors. You better sign us in there. Yeah, so we came in the side door. This is actually the front door. Just push the button to hear talk. Music started when I pushed that button, didn't it? Yeah. Welcome to Holy Trinity Episcopal Church. The people of our congregation are happy to share this house of worship with you. This church is famous for the fresco of the Last Supper, produced in the summer of 1980 by Ben Long, a native of Statesville, North Carolina. The Italian word fresco means fresh, or in the case of the plaster, still wet. Fresco painting is an ancient technique in which finely ground natural mineral colors are mixed with water and painted onto the surface, freshly catalysted with a mixture of lime, sand, and water. The colors enter into the wet surface so that the result is a painting in the wall rather than a painting on a wall. The artist spreads only that much plaster as he can paint in a day before it dries. If you look closely, you can see the surface unevenness of, or daylight, which indicates the boundary of each day's work. Fresco is an extremely durable medium. Surviving examples of fresco painting have been found in Egypt and Crete, dating back over 3,000 years. Because the colors are powdered rock, they will never fade like artificial dyes, but instead grow richer as the plaster cures with age. If you will turn towards the rear of the church, you will see over the doorway a fresco of Moses, bringing the tablets of the law down from Mount Sinai. Turning to the front again, Take a moment to enter into the scene before you. From the artist's perspective, our sanctuary now extends 6,000 miles and 2,000 years to a second-story room in first-century Jerusalem. It is early springtime. Evening sunlight streams through the window that is normally performed by a slave. Holy Trinity Episcopal Church. Well, that was just really neat to it see, was. wasn't it? It was. And we're going to take you to another church across town, West Jefferson, St. Mary's, where some more of his paintings are done. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Okay, so we hope you could hear. I think they probably can. We won't know until we go back to edit this. Yeah. He was telling about uh, Fresco and uh, how they do it and what makes it different from others. And yes. How... Uh, this guy, Long, is that his name? Ben Long. Yeah, Ben Long. He reached out to, I think, a lot of churches yeah. wanting to paint, and none of them would let him, or they didn't answer him back. And this is one of the churches that said, yeah, come yes. and do it. So. And it's a whole different technique, if you can hear it, that it's powdered stone, and so the colors don't ever fade. Yeah. So we'll show you around the cemetery here, and then we're going to head over to the other church. So some of these, there's James Sidney, 1876. Robert Johnson, born 1871, 1939. Look at this cross, Karen, did you see this? Oh, wow. Let's walk on over. This is beautiful trees here in front of the church, aren't they? Yeah. This looks like an old one, let's check it out. It's say 1911, 1914. Oh, what a short life. It's an unusual shape, isn't it? Okay, so this looks like a little little pond, a little fountain, fountain yeah. 
It's pretty the rod. Mm-hmm. Looks like they can turn it up. Make it more of a fountain. Yeah. Okay, uh, across town. Yes. And we'll check out the other one with uh, fresco paintings. Yes. So if you come visit, there is some parking here, but you can see there's a parking lot across there and there's a path. We'll show it to you when we go around. But look at this. Some of them are turned, every other one's turned a different way. I can't tell. That's uh, Galatians 6, 9. Be down my vision. Live a life filled with love. Oh, look at that. Just for 2415. Hmm. Yeah, look at that one. Looks like the rest of them are turned toward us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Pretty flowers. That one says, friends are the flowers in the garden of life. I can do all things. And here we are. Shall we enter? I mean, it's just so peaceful sitting right here in the mountains. Right on the road though. Welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church. That pretty. Mm -hmm. Here's registering us here at this church too. Look at that. that. I mean, it's, uh, these stained glass are nice too. Going back to push the buttons, get the storyteller going. They actually have services here, it looks like. Morning hymn, prayer. On behalf of our congregation, welcome to St. Mary's Festival Church. We are glad to have you here as our guest, and, and we keep this building open 24 hours a day because we want you to use the space whenever you need to pray, meditate, or spend some special time with God. The first Episcopal congregation in Ash County was organized in 1892 as part of the missionary outreach of the Episcopal Church. Originally called St. Simon's Mission, the name was changed to St. Mary's in 1902. This building was made with native chestnut by Ash County craftsmen in the style known at the time as Carpenter's Gothic. Construction began in the summer of 1905 and the first service was held here on Christmas Eve of that year. Besides being an active place of worship, this church is home to three famous works of art. 
In 1973, a young Statesville, North Carolina named Ben Long had just returned from Italy where he'd been studying fresco painting. And one of the few remaining masters was his teacher. Now, in a conversation near this altar, Ben Long remarked that he felt a great expectancy about this place. And the then rector, Father Hodge, replied, well, this is St. Mary's, sir, so why not paint her expecting? The fresco of Mary, great with child, on the chancel wall to the left, was the first of the series of frescoes at St. Mary's and Holy Trinity churches, which would introduce the talents of a fine artist and at the same time delight and inspire thousands of people who visit these churches every year. Ben's own wife was pregnant at the time, and since she became the figure model for this portrayal of Mary. The face is that of an anonymous mountain girl. Over her head hangs an eclipse of the sun. Now people in the time of Christ thought an eclipse was the omen of something enormously important about to happen. Something wonderful and terrible. Something the world changes. John the baptizer, cousin to Jesus. His image of John is a fierce wild man of the desert, draped in hairy hide and a wielding a big stick. John's eyes have a strange fire, and, and one has been a long time in the sun, eating bugs and seeing things most of us cannot see, or would rather not see. Seven, ben Long, the artist, returned again to do the final fresco here at St. Mary's. This was to be the fresco on the true wall, not, not hung in frames as the previous two were. It was taken two years to make the preparations. The chancel wall had to be bricked up and a base coat of plaster applied and allowed to cure. The stained glass window of the Virgin and Child which used to stand behind the altar was moved to the rear of the nave where, where it now greets you as you enter the church. And through his imagination and skill, the blank plaster wall became a representation of the mystery of faith, the core of Christian belief, which the congregation proclaims with one voice in an ancient words, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In the foreground hangs a crucified Jesus in stark three-dimensional realism. Above the head of the corpse, the Romans customarily posted a, a charge for which the criminal was executed, so that others would be afraid to commit the same offense. Finding no Roman crime against the accused, Pontius Pilate wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, and he did it in three languages, Hebrew and Latin and Greek. Of the Jews is, is Christ the King as a spiritual presence against the background of clouds. Ben Long the artist painted the risen Christ as transcending any identifiable race or nationality. So I'm going to just show you guys, there is a parking lot right over there and a path you can walk over. So you don't have to park right up here. We didn't know that. But very, very cool. Lost her somewhere. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. We did. Yes, yes. Beautiful. If you're in this area, uh, what was the first church at? Glen Springs? Glendale. Glendale Springs. Or West Jefferson. You want to come and one. visit both of these churches. Look at these paintings. Yes. They're so uh, realistic. The camera probably doesn't do them justice. No. And they're called the Church of the Frescoes because it's a type of art that Ben Long learned and studied in Italy. So yeah. it's great. It's beautiful. So we have a couple other videos uh, in this area. We have one downtown West Jefferson. You might mm -hmm. want to check that one out. And then we camped at Raccoon Holler, H-O-L-L-E-R. Yeah. In Glendale Springs. Yeah. But thanks for joining us on this. Peaceful in these mountains. Yes. It's only in the 70s today, so mm -hmm. it feels nice. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along to Church of the Frescoes. 
We appreciate you all watching. Until next time, we're Fridays. Forever. Bye-bye, Fridays. Bye,